Hi everyone, I'm back from the dead. Uh, so I finally finished my first semester of medical school. Um, so I can finally go back to making these videos, I guess, for a little bit until I start next semester. One of the topics that I, I think a lot of people have asked about in the past was basically like, how do I study in general? Um, and I have actually been thinking about this for a while. I, I was struggling to really think about like, uh, um, because I actually don't really know how to identify like how exactly I think I study. Um, I think it also very much like differs between like when I was like an undergrad and also how I study as like right now when I'm in medical school. So basically I think I'm gonna divide like the how do I study types of videos like into two separate videos. Um, one of them is gonna be like this one right now is gonna be about um, like how I studied in undergrad. And then I'll make another video on like how I study medical school. Honestly, I'm still kind of figuring that out. So um, yeah, let's just get straight into it. So, so the first tip I think actually comes as a surprise to some people, um, especially since I went to Caltech, which is like, that's a school that like really emphasizes like working together on like problem sets and homeworks and things like that. So um, I personally found it very effective to like work alone. I felt like in the beginning, like during my freshman year and things like that, I, I found myself often like relying on other people a little bit too much in order to like better understand a problem. Um, and you know, that that's great for like actually finishing the, the problem set, right? And, and you can actually probably, you know, finish things a lot faster if you work with other people. But in terms of like actually understanding the content and making sure you can work through the steps by yourself, so that way when it comes to like the final exam and things like that, you can actually do it, you know, um, in like a test setting. I think it's really important to like be able to work through things by yourself. I still think collaboration is super important. It's just for me personally, I couldn't figure out an effective strategy to like work with other people, but also understand fully like what I was, you know, doing at the time. So this actually might sound a little bit cheesy, but I think you should always try and give 110% to everything. And, and that just isn't always just like, you know, the, the week before final exam when you're studying, I think you should always try to give as much as you can, um, even for like small homework assignments, problem sets, things like that. Um, I feel like in general, so Caltech is like a very STEM oriented school and so I can really only speak in that regard, but I felt like STEM was really like, you get what you put into it, if that makes sense. So um, you can build like a much deeper understanding if you like, you know, for example, go to office hours, if you like, um, when you're typing up your problem sets, if you like really pour in like, okay, I'm gonna explain the minutiae of like every single step that you're going through because yeah, you could probably gloss over some steps and honestly from as like I, I used to TA, I, I don't think most people would notice, um, but you're kind of doing a disservice to yourself because you know, by kind of glossing over those steps, you might not actually be able to like follow each of like the individual steps and know exactly why, you know, certain problems and certain solutions like work in a certain way. So I feel like I got a lot of utility by typing out, you know, every set that I did um, for my STEM courses and really focusing on explaining every single detail, not necessarily for the benefit of the TAs that might be grading my set, but really for the benefit of myself. So you might be thinking at this point in the video, like, hey, Michael, like if I could give like 110%, I absolutely would, but like, I just don't have time for that. Um, I, I totally agree with that, which leads me to my next point. You know, it's really important to start early, especially on like problem sets and things like that. I saw a lot of like my other classmates um, at Caltech kind of like delay starting even thinking about problem sets um, until like two or three days before like the actual assignment is due. And I feel like that really like constrains how much effort you can actually put in and how much time you're actually willing to dedicate to like actually understanding the material. Because the fact of the matter is like, you still have homeworks, you know, that you just have to submit, right? And you have like a timetable for like all of your assignments and things like that. So um, by giving yourself an early enough of a start, um, you're setting yourself up for more of an opportunity to like better understand the material. And that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, like you have to start typing up the assignment, like literally the day that it comes out. Personally, for, for me, um, I often find myself looking over the problem set, like when it comes out and just kind of like thinking about it, like in the back of my head. And oftentimes that experience of just like right before I'm about to sleep, like just kind of like thinking about like, oh, how would I generally like approach this problem? I think that was very, um, it was uh, really important to my general like learning process. So number four is that in my experience, I think STEM classes in general is like very cumulative. A lot of the things that I learned in my STEM courses from like freshman year and sophomore year actually really did pour over to like kind of like my more advanced level classes as well. And so um, it's really important to kind of understand things like very thoroughly at a lower level because if you don't do that and then you start taking like more advanced courses, 
Um, everything built on top of one another. And so you'll be busy kind of like studying both the new material and also the old material as well. Um, and so that's kind of like another thing about STEM is like, it's like you have to always put in like very consistent levels of effort. Um, so that way you don't, you're not put in that weird, awkward situation where you have to like relearn everything from freshman year, sophomore year, and also junior year for um, like third year coursework. And so to give you an example of that, um, it's not always just like biology courses are important for biology classes. Sometimes like in my experience, like a lot of like te techniques I learned in like my um, like mathematics courses apply to like my physics courses as well. Um, some of like my physics courses apply to actually like my biology courses. So it's actually, um, I think everything like really builds on, on top of one another, at least it did that for me at Caltech. So I think it's just really important in general to uh, put in like, just like a very consistent, manageable level of effort over your entire however long undergrad takes you. So. The last thing I want to talk about is really just trying to find something that you are just really passionate about. I think, um, you know, a lot of people kind of joke around with the saying that like, oh, if you find the thing that you love to do and you do as a career, you never have to work another day in your life. But um, it, it's a lot harder to do that than it actually sounds. And I think part of the reason why I think I did really well in my like STEM course work and stuff is, is that like I genuinely enjoyed like the things I was learning. And yeah, like, you know, sometimes certain weeks it seemed unmanageable and sometimes it, certain topics might be like out of my interest zone. Um, but in general, I think I really enjoyed my experiences at Caltech and the classes that I took. Um, and I think that that's kind of like what allowed me to continue working even in like, you know, very difficult times or like in times where like I had a very like difficult uh, course schedule. Um, I think it's like really important to identify like, you know, what you want to do in life. And unfortunately, I don't really have any advice to give on like how you actually do that. It's something that I've, I've thought about a lot. Um, cause it's, it's a lot harder than it actually sounds, right? Like oftentimes I think, um, especially if you're, um, I think many of you are considering like, uh, medicine and you guys might be pre-med right now. Um, uh, but oftentimes we're encouraged to go like, you know, boom, 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 like to the next thing. Right. I mean, always, you know, appreciate like the next research thing or the next like, uh, uh, award or something like that. Right. And it doesn't give you a lot of time to actually think about like, what do you want to do with your life? You know, like what, like, do you even enjoy the things that you're like doing right now? Right. Um, and I think it's like really important to identify those things. And it's just something that personally for me, I think I just got really lucky that I didn't really have to think about those things because it just happened that the first thing I chose, um, like in terms of like my coursework and major was actually something that I was really interested in. But yeah, so um, those were five things that I think uh, allowed me to really do, I guess like pretty well um, during my undergrad. Um, from like a STEM perspective. Let me know down in the comments below if you guys think there are any other strategies that work particularly well for you. Um, but otherwise, I'll post a follow-up video at some point, I guess, talking about um, some of the things that I think have worked for me in med school so far. Uh, but otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video.